Hello everyone, welcome to my trip to reality episode, I believe it's 69. I always rem forget what kind of episode it is, but like when it's like episode 100, I promise to remember it. Because then I'll need to do something special, because you know, it's episode 60, no it's episode 100 then. Um, I haven't anything structured, and if you're on the YouTube, you'll notice that... Um, it's dark, which means I'm recording at around 7 p.m. So, um, this week, honestly, it, nothing really has happened. It's, um, you know, doing the 9 to 5 and then just waiting for shoots to happen within two weeks or within one week now. I'm doing a couple of shoots uh, and that will be cool. And one thing I almost forgot to mention was, hey, the video is out. The purpose video is out on YouTube and I like spread it to everyone I know and like put it on forums and that sort of thing. I just want to spread it out. And once I like put it out, let me just talk about that for a while. <sighs> Expectations of like, I put it out, now what? Um... I, when I put it out, it felt like a big thing for me, you know, because, you know, I've been working on it for one year, and it's finally done, and it's been one of those things where it's like, I prioritize the video, and then the passion project comes in afterwards. So after the video, now that it's done, I'm going to start photographing, like, my passion project. Um, the reality sets in. And I feel like that's a little bit... Of, of a build up that video towards the project that I'm working on. Um, but like once I put it out, it's like, okay, what do you expect to happen? Do you expect like tons of views? Do you expect people responding to it? What do you expect? And first it was just a point of finishing it. Once it's finished and it, now that it's been put out, it's like, okay, yeah, that's done. Um, and I can put it on my website as a portfolio for, to like look what I can do with video. But bottom line is the message that went through with the video. And that's what is most important. And it explains me who I am as a person and why I'm doing photography. I guess that's what it is. It's, you know... It's a short documentary about my life and more importantly, what my purpose in life is. And uh, yeah, I know I'm saying this at 24 years old, like I have another four years to live. How can you say that that's your purpose? You know, I felt this for eight to 10 years now and I'm still feeling it. So you know so yeah videos out cool now passion project yes but also focusing on the fashion shooting fashion and everything and the reason why i shoot fashion is to build a portfolio to then later on go to h&m and you know everyone just slap a huge portfolio on the table and going yeah this is me hire me or like making them beg to hire me i'm not gonna beg they're gonna beg i'm not gonna beg i'm gonna be like here you go and like they're gonna be like oh please and i'm like yeah sure but i need this amount of money um no but i do um feel like my f work in general within fashion is improving and people who don't listen to this because of photography um, I'll talk about a little other things as well, but let me just put this out specifically. Working within fashion, um, you know, obviously the more shoots you do, the more you learn. And I've le learned a couple of things during these like two months. One of the shoots was like, I learned a lot, which meant I screwed up a lot. Um, but then I started to realize what an editorial actually means. It's a storyline. 
And, you know, I also realized that, and if you're a fashion photographer, if you're a phot- photographer within, that's interested in photographing fashion, uh, this is for you, I guess. Um, first off, a tutorial. What does it mean? I just create a mood board and like with feelings, that sort of thing, and then I go from there. Um, it is more involved with that. Um, most of my thought process and everything of planning went into the mood board. And uh, once it was everything was done and I started like editing the photographs, selecting the photographs, my mistake there, and it was a big mistake, is just picking the best looking photographs. And that's, that's wrong. Um, because once you've done a shoot, you should go back to your mood board, read what the mood board was about, and then just take photographs from there and just make sense of it as a whole. So you create this sort of storyline. Um, and that's where I am right now. Like, I did plan to do this shoot. Um, it's like, the, the shoot is about like half glass empty and you're like, skeptical and you look at things in a more negative way um you look at the glass as not half full but half empty or just empty basically and the feelings are confusing and just feeling stressed out and just feeling like bad 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 i guess and that was the mood board that was sort of the theme um did the shoot then when i finished the shoot you go and look at all the photographs and you're like oh shit i mean you don't plan every single shot let's say you're doing 12 photographs you don't plan every single photograph in that case you just need to shoot 12 photographs and go doom 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 and there you go no you just go through thousands of images and go like oh this could work that could work and you're just spontaneously trying to stitch this story together that's where i'm at right now with the editorial part one thing has happened today specifically within just my life um i worked with an agency now for around two months and this person came to sweden today so i picked this person up and uh, we are doing some uh, um productions from this week and next week and it'll be fun and just as a whole within fashion i feel like things are moving in the right direction um but it's too early you know once i've done shoots and once i've like got them published and everything then you could just see where it takes me you know but i've made this sort of i've said to myself like six months work hard within fashion and see where it takes you if it doesn't take you anywhere then you have to change things up if it takes you in many directions i'm like okay cool let's move forward let's just keep on doing this so yeah that's what's been going on if you follow me on instagram for example dennis forsberg photography if you haven't then shame on you then I talked a little about a little bit about this week that was um, about making money and just sort of killing that voice inside of like the doubt. Um, I'll tell the story here because you know Instagram stories is just twenty four hours and then the story is gone, and I feel like it's a story that needs to be told, and I'm telling it right now. I was gonna order food. It was this was Thursday last week, and um, I thought to myself because I ordered through the website and I looked at all the photographs. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> they don't have that good photo of good like good quality of photographs on the website. And they had photographs on food and everything. They probably photographed it with a camera uh, or with a phone, for example. And I'm like. I could do this so much better. Um, I called them. I ordered the food on my way there. I've been like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk to them about this." Um, like just offering my services, um, and that's when the sort of doubt came in the way, 
I felt like, you know what, no, I mean, they obviously don't want photographs. Who wants photographs nowadays of food or just anything? Like, everyone's a photographer nowadays. But obviously, I can't think like that. Because if I think like the majority of people out there, then I can't work as a photographer. In any case, you know, if you feel like there's value to it, you increase the value yourself. And from one point further in the future, if you work hard on that and believing in your views and like, for example, me thinking that photography is really important, then you can make that change of changing people's minds that, hey, you actually do need photographers out there. But if you think that everyone can go around with a a phone, like just a phone and photographing the food and everything, or just anything, and call themselves a photographer, if everyone thought that way, photographers wouldn't be able to work this day. You, you would do shoots with an iPhone, um, or a Samsung, whatever, but you would just do shoots with a phone, and like, let's not lower ourselves that much, you know? If you put value to it, and if you believe in it, and you work hard for it, then there will be value. At some point, people will realize the value in it because, I mean, let's try to talk about an example. Um, Okay, this is a super weird example. But let's say (laughs) you're eating like a certain pasta and... For you, it's just a pasta and you don't really care about it. But then you eat like at a restaurant and it's so goddamn good and like opens up to like, oh my God, can pasta do this and that? And you build like an appreciation for it. Um, Or it could be like, say that you're not into concerts and you're like, yeah, I, I have Spotify. Why do I need to go to concerts? But then all of a sudden you go to a concert and you're like, oh my God. The people in front of the stage that believes in this sort of thing can change your opinion about something. All of a sudden, next week, you're not listening to um, Ed Sheeran on Spotify. You're actually going to his concerts and you feel and that sort of thing. Like, that's why it's so important for people to put value into things. If no one puts value into anything and just everyone just you know, takes everything for granted, then how are you going to define the meaning of the word quality, you know? Anyways, I drifted off as always. Doubt came in the way when I was on my way to the restaurant, and I thought to myself, no one needs photographs, and just like, I mean, no, no, No one needs photographs. And then I thought to myself, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me just kill that noise quickly because it's fucking ridiculous to think that way. They have a website with photographs on it. Of course they need photographs. And then I thought to myself, okay, how will I approach this? So once I got there, I asked him, do you get a lot of customers through your website? leading into like oh really because he said yeah i do i said oh really i'm a photographer and i did this and that and if you want i can send you what i've done photography wise within food um send your portfolio and we'll go from there and they said yeah cool do that now here's where Like, that's great of me. Good job, Dennis. Pat yourself on the back. Woohoo. But once you've done that, I've sent the photographs out. The thing is, they haven't replied back. Where do you go from here? Okay, because this is pretty common. You, You offer them a service. They don't hit you back. What do you do? You have to reply. Let's say within a week, if a week has gone, and they haven't replied, hit them back. Hey, what about this shoot? It would it be something for you? Just to get a reply. 
don't like email them the next day because that will just rush things and they're probably going to turn you down. But if you give them a week, they can think about it. But yeah, next to Thursday, yeah, Thursday, tomorrow, the, it's going to week. <clears throat> and I will email them saying, what's up? Is this something for you? Um, and then we'll go from there. And, you know, it's not always 100% yes. Um, but, yeah. Also, one other thing. In a few episodes ago, I talked about going that extra mile with customers. And uh, I said that it will be worth it. You might not get more money out of it. You spend might You maybe spend more time with it. But it is worth it. And I believe... Yesterday, I got a call from the same customer wanting more photographs because they did a such a good job with the first ones. The person hit me back and wanted me to do more. See, if if I was that, if I wasn't super nice and generous and just do going that extra mile, maybe that person wouldn't hit me back. And because of that time, because I spent more time with it, they're hitting me back. Wanting more, and that's sort of what you want. One last thing that I just realized. Saturday, last, well, yeah, last week. I, I talked to, um, uh, I think it was an entrepreneur. And what he does basically what this person does is just offer business solutions to you know businesses and just making people grow within the business um doesn't matter what it is if it's a service business then he he this person can help you grow within that business he's a consultant like sam Ovens, if you know who that is um and i be i think gary v is the same giving them advice, just seeing how their clients gain more profit and that sort of thing. And I talked to this person and um, it was an interesting talk, but I was at that point where I can't spend a lot of money on having like a, what do you call it? Like a business guru or whatever you want to call it. And... So I'm left with doing things myself. How should I do it? Facebook ads, Instagram ads, podcasts, net, like getting my name out everywhere. Is that the is that the way to go? Honestly, you know, once you're in it, you get you get like so many thoughts of how what you're gonna do and everything. Once you think about like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I'm gonna that, do that. Let's let's be like this. If you've started a business and you're in it and trying to make a change, then you some people might be a little bit confused. If you're thinking of making a business, you haven't created it yet, but you're thinking of making a business, then all of a sudden everything becomes more clear and you're like, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. But the thing is, you don't, you don't think about the little things. Once you get into the sort of business side of things, you start to think about all the small things and we need to worry about this and that and this. And you stop looking at it from like a higher point of view where you can see all the problems and you can see all the solutions. You can have all those ideas. I feel like it's a very interesting way of looking at it. I think a great way to do it is just looking at other businesses and see what they are doing. But then also, you know, you want to be you want to stick out. So if I do an Instagram story, everyone does an Instagram story. Okay, let me adapt myself to Instagram TV. Well, everyone ad- is adapting themselves to Instagram TV. Um, so just now with social media, there's always unique ways to do things. But now when you see everything and what every single person is doing, it's just so difficult to like, okay, but how am I then supposed to be unique, you know? But, and it's going to sound cliche, but do you do yourself? Because that will separate you from other people. 
doing things your way, offering your personality into things, because that's not something Eric could do, because Eric, well, he is Eric, and I am Dennis. That's a way of sort of separating yourself and trying to not copy everyone else, because if you copy everyone else, then you're just going to be that, like, think of it as a, like a bunch of fish swimming together. If you're the same color blue as everyone else, blue is a bad color because, you know, the sea is blue. But, like, if everyone's a red fish in the sea and yours red as well, you're gonna not be noticed. If you do things as, like, the purpose video, which is right here, now I'm just gonna put that link up there because you have to watch it. And you're like, ooh, look at this person, he's unique and he's Dennis and he's, oh my god, look at personality. Ooh, that sells. <laughs> and I guess that's a great way of doing it. I didn't do this video for marketing purposes or anything. This is me. I'm doing me and I'm putting it out there. Yeah. So, and one thing, if you look at the video, I didn't give a fuck. I cried. I was opening the, like video most of the things that i'm about and who i am you can see in that video and looking through that video you can get a big sense of who i am actually we don't have to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion talking about who i am because i don't want people to judge me you can look at that video and go huh that's him you don't have to sit here you can look at that video and go understand who i am one last thing i don't like people in social media that includes their family and their children and use it as clickbait oh my god look i have a cute child and i'm gonna use it for marketing purposes that's goddamn nah man put that aside that's been everything for me guys um and i'm also editing the next shoot which is that half glass empty sort of thing uh follow me on instagram dennis for Sprig photography there's gonna be like a thing after this episode on youtube where you can actually just see what my name on instagram is so you can just follow that link is in the description as well and i will be coming out with i want to do more videos but we'll see what happens but anyways i'll see you guys next week